In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I make this pink flamingo buttercream mini cake as part of this mini buttercream cake series, the rest of which can be found on the Cakeheads website. Okay, so I'm going to start off here with just showing you for when you're making mini cakes, there's um, an easy way to do it where you can just bake a couple of bigger cakes and then cut out some layers from them. So that's what I'm doing here. I baked these two layers of 10 inch cakes. Okay, and I am just leveling them so that the round part is taken off like I do with all of my cakes. I use my little Wilton leveler there, super easy. So I'm doing that to both of them. And I want these mini cakes to be about four inch rounds, right? So little four inch cakes. So I'm actually gonna use this cutter set I have um, and I'll link in the supplies. And then I also have these little four inch cake cards that I ordered online. I'll um, provide a link for those as well. And now, and I'm putting them on six inch square cake boards. Okay, so that's gonna be the setup for these cakes. And I'm gonna use this cutter set that I have and I'm going to find a cutter, just a round cookie cutter that is just a little bit smaller than the four inch cake card because I want to leave at least a quarter of an inch room around the edges of the cake to add my buttercream. So there's a nice thick layer of buttercream on these babies and the cake is not showing through. Okay, so I picked one that was just a little bit smaller than my four inch cake card. And it turns out I can get out of this 10 inch round baked layer, I can get five circles. So I'm just pushing down and pulling it back up and it worked great. This is the uh, chocolate sour cream cake recipe that I love to use. It's on the website and I'll link to that as well. Okay, so I've got five circles and I'm going to do that out of the other layer as well. And then I'll be adding my buttercream so that when I put these all together, they're going to be about five and a quarter inches tall. Okay, so this will make five cakes that are five and a quarter inches tall. Actually, okay, actually, I baked three layers of these. So if you want to get five and a quarter inch um, cakes, I actually ended up using three layers, right? So you'll see as I put this together, okay. I only show you two there, but there's actually three. All right, I got my buttercream on the bottom of my four inch cake card. I'm adding one of the layers that I cut out and putting some buttercream on top of that, okay? And now I'm adding my next layer and then I'm gonna put buttercream on top of that and I'm going to add my third layer. So if you wanna make five four inch round cakes that are about five, maybe a little bit more inches tall, then you wanna bake three 10 inch layers and then cut out circles out of, five circles out of each of those layers so that you have 15 little circles all together. Then you put them together in threes like this. Okay, now to frost these babies. Um, a lot of people struggle with frosting mini cakes because they're so small and yeah finicky but this was actually pretty easy I got this done pretty quickly with the same method that I always use to frost my buttercream cakes they and they come out nice and smooth and with nice sharp edges so this really worked so I'm getting a nice thick layer of buttercream on top and I'm smoothing it out it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just trying to get as smooth as possible and it doesn't have to be level because we're going to work on that in a minute. Now, I'm using reusable baking foil here, but you can use wax paper. I used wax paper for some of these projects. Um, you could use any nonstick surface, but we are going to be flipping this cake. Okay, so I put it on one edge and then I smooth it down as, as I go. And that keeps all the air bubbles out of there, right? We don't want any air bubbles trapped in between. Then I'm going to put my... Um, cake board that I'm eventually going to use, actually a bigger one, whatever you want to use. You could use foam core, whatever. And I put my hand on and I, and I slide it to the edge of the counter and my other hand underneath and I flip this baby over. Okay, I know it's very precarious looking because it's so little and jiggly, but <laughs> use, you know, a nice dense cake for this. Even if you don't use a dense cake, you'll probably be fine. Dense, I like the, the white al almond sour cream and the chocolate sour cream because that sour cream makes it a little bit more dense and it makes it really easy to work with. Now, I normally l put a level on top here just to make sure that my cake is nice and level, but because these things are so jiggly and little, it didn't work very well, so I kind of ditched the level. 
and I just eyeballed these babies and especially because of the decoration we're going to be putting on them as long as you eyeball them and they're and they're close to level you're going to be totally fine all right now I've got my Wilton um, icer tip that I'm using in my icing bag and this is how I get my buttercream on all of my cakes because I never have to do a crumb coat when I do it this way it is amazing one coat and I'm done but I only can accomplish that especially with uh, white icing on chocolate when I'm using this Wilton icer tip so I go around once and then I usually go around again just to get a really nice thick layer on so definitely make sure you have lots of buttercream to work with for this and so I've got two layers on now I'm gonna use my cake heads bench scraper because <laughs> it's nice and tall and I'm tightening up my turntable there because because these cakes are so small I have to you know just deal with this slightly differently I don't want to I don't want to really f twirl this thing around I want to hold with my left hand with just gentle pressure on top we want to try to keep this level level so keep that in mind you know we want a nice straight cake when we're done so left hand hold it if you're right-handed left hand holding down the top that cake board on the top which will eventually be the bottom of the cake which you'll see that as we go if you've never done this technique before and I am scraping holding the scraper flush to my surface and I am making just little scrapes a little bit at a time if you see start to see some exposed cake then you're probably um, not holding your scraper straight up and down just put a little bit more buttercream over and keep going okay I got a different angle so you can see here now if you go too fast and you swipe off too much you're going to like create holes in your buttercream you need to slow down and I'm actually going a little bit too fast here I was trying to kind of pump these babies out I recommend going even slower if you're newer at this the slower you go the more precise you are the better your buttercream finish will look in the end also if you notice when I let the scraper leave the edge of the cake I'm letting it kind of slide off the edge of the cake now I've sped this up a little bit so we can um, so you can just see the whole process but when you go slowly just let it kind of glide off the end the edge of the cake um, and that will help to not leave a line when you do that you should see that here I'm just kind of scraping a short section and then letting it just kind of glide off the edge um, you know not being so uh, you don't want to pull buttercream off of it as you're letting as you're taking the scraper off okay so if you just let it glide off the edge that would be very helpful um, now for me and these buttercream cakes I was good with the finish I got on them. You could get them even smoother by putting them in the fridge for like 15 minutes and then scraping again very slowly and gently at the end there. Um, but I don't think, I never feel like I need to because people don't expect buttercream to like look like fondant. Um, they actually, when they want buttercream, they actually, I think, are pretty okay with it having slight flaws. But um, it does get it pretty smooth if you go this way and you just take your time okay I just added buttercream to the bottom of the board there and then I use the cake board it's going to stay on to flip it but this was in the freezer for an hour first an hour before I flipped it and then peeled off my foil or my uh, wax paper whatever you used on top okay so pop that into the freezer for an hour before you flip it back over and once you do you'll have these beautiful sharp edges on top but you will most likely have these little gaps that you can see here as well but because your cake is very hard now because you put it in the freezer for an hour you can fill in these gaps with some extra room temperature buttercream and just kind of smooth it out and even you can see the edges you just use my finger because I have gloves on right around the edge that I've just added some buttercream to and that will smooth that out beautifully as well because it's the buttercream is so hard from having been in the freezer your new warm temperature buttercream just kind of melds in and fills in the gaps and looks beautiful and then you can just take your little I have um, my little angled tiny little spatula there and just bringing it from the outer edge into the center if you want to work on 
getting the buttercream off the edge just like that there. And then you can fill in any gaps or, that you see, anything that you want to fix, you can do that now um, and pretty easily once your cake has been chilled, okay? Now, the bottom. So if you did not get your cake level, you can fix it by adding some extra buttercream underneath your cake board. Because these cakes are so small, they're not super heavy, so you can put some extra buttercream under the cake. You can kind of lift it up a little bit and shove some buttercream under to kind of help make up um, any, any tilting you have in the cake. Does that make sense? Um, but then you're going to have this gap on the board. You're going to have a gap either way, most likely. And this is how I filled in. Same thing that I basically did to the top there. I'm just adding room temperature buttercream, kind of shoving it into the gap. You can use a piping bag if that's easier for you. And then just using my little palette knife here, tiny mini angled spatula, and just smoothing out. It's kind of hard to do on camera, so <laughs> at an odd angle. But then, and then you just clean up your board and you're all set. You now have a nice smooth canvas to work with and start decorating. And here is just a little refresher on how to make a buttercream rose if you haven't seen my previous video on the Cake Heads website. Um, okay, I've got my flower nail, I put a little buttercream on it and my little square of wax paper. And now we're going to take the tip, I think I have size 104 on here, and the thick side down, okay, I'm just holding it against the flower nail and I'm just turning and applying pressure. And so I'm creating this little center mound that we can build upon, okay. Now starting down on the flower nail, one side of the center, I'm going to just apply pressure and swoop over. And then I'm going to start in the center of the previous petal and do it again. Um, and I'm, I want to keep this relatively tight so that that hole in the center kind of goes away, okay? And this starts the center of my rose. You can even make that tighter to get rid of that hole completely. Now I'm going to do a second round and you see I'm starting at the center of the previous petal I just made. I'm just kind of lifting it up gently and bringing it back down as I apply pressure. Now the more you angle your tip backwards, the more open your petals are going to be. You generally want to start with the inner layers being angled towards the center so that they're a little bit more closed. And then as you get to the outer layers, we're just doing the same motion each time. But if you angle the outer layers back a little bit more, then it will start to open up for you. Okay, that is just a quick little rose. Just go watch that again and practice. The more practice you have, the the better you'll get at it, I promise. I could not do that the first time. Um, you just practice it and you'll get fast and they'll be really easy to make eventually, okay? I made a bunch of different sizes and then I put them into the freezer before I colored them. You can color them whatever color you want. I have Roxy and Rich Edible Hybrid Luster Dust here in Princess pink and I've got a fluffy little brush and because these have been in the freezer for about 15 minutes they're nice and solid so then I can just dust on some color over top and I like to do it this way often when coloring my buttercream because it kind of gives it a um, variegated look like the color is not totally I don't variegated I think it's more for a stripe but um, it's not like a totally solid pink right there it's deeper in some places and lighter in other places and I kind of like that look for buttercream flowers but you could just color your buttercream a solid pink and pipe that way and then add some powder on afterwards if you want a deeper look however you want to do it will work this is just one way you can go about coloring your buttercream now I have the sparkle dust pump which is also technically edible FDA approved and this gives it just a little bit of sparkle and I added that it's also in the color princess pink I added that to the centers of the roses um, make sure you get around the edges as well so that they don't look totally you know white or light buttercream color on you just uh, you can lift it up because it's nice and solid because it's been in the freezer if they start to soften up on you put them back in the freezer and then take them back out and color them again then you're gonna want to put your flowers back into the freezer so that they're nice and solid for you before you add them to your cake because you can manhandle them that way and they'll be perfectly fine. And again, make sure you make a couple of different sizes so when we piece this all together, it will go together well. Okay, so 
Bef while your roses are in the freezer getting nice and cold, we need to create a mound to place these roses on to create the flamingo's body. And I decided to do that by mixing leftover cake scraps with buttercream to create a kind of cake ball. I don't know if you've made cake balls before, but this is one way to do it by mixing cake scraps in with buttercream. I have cold cake scraps here, mixing that in with room temperature buttercream. You don't have to do it that way. You can They can both be room temperature and then you pop it in the fridge afterwards to set. It doesn't really matter, but my cold cake scraps, leftover cake, like cut off scraps from, from cake when you're leveling it, um, will do just fine. Mix that all together, just a little bit of buttercream so it all holds together nicely and so that you have a nice ball that you can create into the shape of the flamingo. Okay, now I'm cutting out some cardboard because um, we need to put supports in this cake with a cake card or cake board on top to support the weight of the flamingo, the um, cake pop mixture and the flowers that are going on top. Otherwise, it'll be way too big and it'll push down on our cake. So I just kind of... Um, used a Tupperware container to see how big my cake was, which I, this is a four inch cake, right? So I want to make a circle that's slightly smaller than that. And I'm going to just kind of trim off the side of it because that's where the head of the flamingo is going to go. So I don't, I want to be able to push that head into the cake. So that's why I left that room there and cut off that cardboard. And then I have my bubble tea straws that I'm going to cut to the right size. Um, that I can place that piece of cardboard on afterwards and we will be able to support the weight of the flamingo. Now I am doing this the very quick way because it does not have to be perfectly level because our flamingo is going to make up for any error that we have there. Do I recommend doing it this way? No. I would go <laughs> and you know however you cut your support straws I would do how you normally do it I was just being lazy there and not doing it my normal way but regardless cut your straws to the height that they need to be and then add your cake board on top with a little buttercream to glue it on a little buttercream on top of that and then your cake ball that you created you can put that right on top and cover that with buttercream you know the shape it's just a general kind of uh, ball that I kind of smush down onto the board, right? It's just like a, um, a mound, we'll call it, for the body. Now I am sealing the bottom with some extra buttercream just to, you know, keep everything in place and so that we don't have some big gap that you'll see down there. But it doesn't have to be smoothed over real well or anything like that. No big deal. This cake has been chilled for a bit in the fridge. Um, to make keep my buttercream finish from getting all kind of messed up when I'm putting my flowers on here. And my roses are right out of the freezer, so they're very nice and hard, so I can add them without messing them up and I can manhandle them. Okay, so I'm using some icing in a disposable icing bag. I could just cut the tip and I'm just using that as glue, little globs of it as glue to stick onto my cake pop mound here. And the left side I'm going to keep, I'm going to, um, keep a little gap along the way because the head is going to have to slide in there. Okay, so you can see I started off with like one center in the front there, a nice big one, and then I added a medium sized one to the right and a small one to the left. Actually, they're both kind of small. This is kind of like a game of Tetris. You have to fit the roses in. And you don't want there to be big gaping holes in between the roses. You know, you don't want the gaps to be too big. But little gaps are fine because we are going to, I'm going to show you how to fill those in later. So, you know, if your roses start to soften on, you want to work relatively fast so your roses don't get too soft. You can see the little gap I have there on the left. And you can see gaps between the flowers. Don't freak out. We're going to add we're going to fill those in later. It'll be fine. So small gaps are fine, but not big gaps. Okay, and then when it looks good, time to move on to creating the head. I'm using modeling chocolate, straight modeling chocolate here for the head, and I just added a little bit of pink into it. I want a nice light pink, nothing too crazy. So that's a nice light pink. And I need some wire. So I've got this floral wire. Um, you want to have like mm, 20 gauge or lower. That'll give you a nice stiff wire. 
to use because you don't want it too floppy because we want our head, our long neck of our flamingo to hold up for us. So I'm using, you just saw me use my uh, little mini roller to kind of create the round parts. This doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be covered in modeling chocolate. We just want the general idea of how tall this should be. It's a good idea to print out a picture of a flamingo online that you find so that you can get the right proportion. I will have a picture in the post that you can print out. Um, once after you create your body, measure how big your body it is, and then print out a picture of the flamingo um, so that it's the same size, the body is the same size as yours, and then you'll know how big to make the head. Okay, so that's what I based mine off of a printed out inspiration picture and made sure the body was the same size as the one I created when I printed it out, the one I created on my cake. Okay. So now I am rolling this piece of pink modeling chocolate using my fondant smoother. Um, I first used my hands to get it to this basic shape and now the smoother is going to get it so it's nice and smooth and even throughout. Though I do want the head portion of the flamingo to be a little bit thicker than the body and we are not going to let our imaginations run away with us here. <laughs> we are going to be very professional about this as we're rolling. Okay, moving on. Um, so you can see what I'm doing with this fondant smoother. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, you know, it's the white elephant in the room. Um, I am just using this fondant smoother to help me by pushing it down a little bit towards the left side there to create a thicker section. <laughs> That's going to be the head of the flamingo. And um, once I get it to about the right thickness, again, you can use your uh, inspiration picture to help you with that since it's printed out to the correct size, the size the actual cake flamingo is. Um, you can use that as a guide to how thick the neck should be. Once I think I've got that all set, Okay, I've already bent my wire to the shape it's supposed to be, and you can use your inspiration picture for that as well, so you know just the right kind of shape it should be. And um, we're going to just kind of place that over our modeling chocolate, line it up so that the, mo it, the wire goes through the middle of the modeling chocolate. And we're going to place it over and we're going to push down. We want to leave a little piece of the wire coming out of the head of the flamingo because we want to attach our beak of the flamingo to that little extra piece of wire. Not that you have to do that, but that's what I ended up doing. You'd probably be fine even if you lost that little piece of wire at the top there. Um, so I flipped mine over at first. I Actually, this is my second try, but I think you can do it on the first try. Um, now that I've kind of experimented for you. <laughs> I flipped it over so that this was the back that I'm pushing through, but it turns out I didn't need to do that. I ended up redoing it and just um, pushed it down through the the side that you will see of the flamingo and then smoothed it out in the end, just because it was easier to kind of see what was going on. And you'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm pushing it down through the back here and then um, got to make sure it's lined up well, your piece of melanie chocolate, with this wire. Otherwise, it's going to kind of poke out of it. And you want it to be as flat as possible, your wire, as well. You don't want it to be higher in some places than others. Um, otherwise, it will kind of poke through on you in some places where you don't want it to. And then I just kind of squeeze those edges together and then kind of rub them together and to try and get rid of the seam. You can actually squeeze with your fingers and then you can even trim a little bit with an X-Acto knife or any kind of knife to kind of cut that little lip off that forms after you squeeze it together. And then you can smooth it down with your fingers. So here was me, this is my second attempt. You can see this is the side you will see of the flamingo, but I did want to show you that you can just push the wire right down into it and you can smooth it um, enough so it will get back into shape for you. You don't have to worry about it. It will take a little bit of smoothing but it's not a big deal because you all know if you've worked with the with modeling chocolate before the beauty of modeling chocolate is that you can smooth it back into shape without any seams and it will work beautifully for you. So I'm just going to speed this up so you can see that I just used my fingers to smooth that back into shape. Um, if you're making this for a customer, of course, put uh, gloves on. Um, but smooth it back into shape. Just take a little time to do that and it should 
work perfectly fine for you. Now it is going to be, you know, definitely something that people are going to pay attention to on this cake, part of the focal point of this cake. So you definitely want to make sure it looks clean. So take a little extra time to just smooth it with your fingers and get it into a nice even shape um, and that will really make your project look really nice in the end. And that little flat plastic uh, palette knife is very helpful for blending seams together. So that's why I have that out there. Anytime I have something, a seam that I have to blend, I'll just use that knife. Um, and that kind of does the trick for me pretty well. And then you can see I have that little extra piece of wire by coming out of the head. And I'm going to use that to attach my beak to it. Make sure the neck is a little bit thinner. Uh, right underneath the head is a little bit thinner than the rest of the body. That will add to the look of the flamingo. Of course, I'm looking at an inspiration picture to just kind of guide me as I'm doing this. And I finally got it pretty much to where I want it. Okay, so now I'm adding a little bit of water um, onto that little uh, beak section. And I'm going to use a little piece of white modeling chocolate. Definitely rub your hands with some scrap modeling chocolate to get any lint off of them after you've washed your hands and dried them with a towel. Get the lint off with a, with a scrap piece of modeling chocolate before you roll out the little beak here. So roll it out into a little shape with like, you know, a little point on the side that's kind of curved down. Okay, you want a little bit of a curve there on that beak. Again, use your photo that you print out as your guide, and it will be pretty easy to do and get it done pretty quickly. And then you can just slide it right on to the wire, and the water that you put on there will help attach it to the head. Um, and then if your hands are a little bit too hot or it's getting a little melty on you, just use a little powdered sugar and stop touching it for a little while and it um, will harden up for you. And then you can also put it in the fridge if you want it to harden a little bit more quickly so you can start working doing these other things to it, like using this Baker Pan edible marker and creating a little eye. And then I was going to uh, color in the beak with that, but decided to use edible paint instead later on because I didn't want it to be blotchy, and sometimes the marker can come out a little blotchy if you're doing large chunks of color. Okay, so now I just uh, cover that wire with some safety seal. I'll have a link in the post below, which will make that wire food safe. And then you can slide it right into your cake. You can either push it down into the bottom cake or you can push it into your cake ball. I would push it down, angle it down into the bottom cake right underneath that board. And um, those roses will help hold it up as well and it should be in there pretty nice and sturdy. Okay, now I'm just creating the legs coming down into the cake. I'm just using Edible Art Paint, um, the burnt bronze color. Make sure your buttercream is cold before you paint on it. And I just um, beefed up the knobs there and created the little feet. Um, and then after I was done creating the legs, I went back and used some black to color in the beak as well, also using um, edible art paint. Really like this stuff for coloring on just about any medium. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back. Now I put this in the fridge for a couple minutes to get it nice and firm again, and I'm going back using my petal tip that I used to create the roses, which is a 104, and I'm just going into the gaps, and I'm just creating like petals in the gaps by just squeezing, applying pressure in the gap and then pulling it out and letting go of the bag to release the, the pressure and that just fills in my gaps with like petals but it almost kind of looks like feathers in a way, you know, and then once you're done doing that, pop the cake back in the fridge or the freezer for a few minutes and then so that those can harden up on you and then you can color those the same color the same color that you use for the roses. You can go back over and fill in any color that got removed from the roses when you're putting them on, you know, just kind of finish it off. I'm using this Roxy and Rich Sparkle Dust um, pump again to just kind of get at those. I'm, t I'm doing a kind of a messy job, but <laughs> use your color to fix any spots that need it. 
I felt like my cake needed a little extra something, so I'm using Sprinkle Pop Mix here. This was a Valentine um, selection, but I thought it worked well with this project. I kind of took a away the big red balls and just focused more on the pink, but there's some red mixed in there. There's some gold. I thought that worked pretty well and gave my project a little extra something. And then I just used my buttercream glue and added a rose down at the bottom, and then to cover up the sides, you can just use your petal tip again to create some more petals on the side and color those as well after they firm up and that is pretty much it that is a flamingo it's pretty easy once you get the hang of the roses there's there's nothing hard about the cake you can create one pretty quickly this is again on a mini cake a four incher but you know it's just a little fun pretty something for those who don't want a huge cake for a celebration um, just want something little but something that's still pretty and has that wow factor. If you are not a Cake Heads member and would like to come join the Cake Heads family, we'd love to have you. We have a ton of fun over there hanging out and learning all kinds of things from each other. You get access to all the videos on the Cake Heads website, including the rest of the mini buttercream cakes in the series, the umbrella and the paintbrush and the ice cream cones. Those designs and tutorials are all over there with so much more. We'd love to have you as part of the family. Thanks for watching. See you later.